Hello friends and welcome to my San Francisco Pen Show vlog for 2024. This was my first time going to the San Francisco Pen Show and I was very excited. I flew in on Thursday a whole day before the show and I actually got there pretty early. I had a lot of time to kill before my friend arrived in San Francisco and so I went to a coffee shop called Lighthouse in South San Francisco and I was there for about four and a half, five hours and I had lunch, I did some plotter mapping of the SF Pen Show and made a priority list of the vendors that we needed to see and tackle over the three day show. My friend mostly had the pen wish list and I had a stationary wish list. So I mapped out by priority and where we thought was going to sell out first. Then I made my way to the hotel and we were staying at a loft just across the West End where the pen show was being held and we were able to get a pen show rate. So that really helped with being able to stay very close and very accessible to the pen show. We started to run into pen people in the hotel lobby like Karina Loves to Plans and Jonathan Brooks of Carolina Pen Company. And it was very surreal to see some of these Instagrammers and YouTubers in the flesh and in person also fangirled and got starstruck when I started seeing people that I recognize from social media. My friend Eileen and I decided to go into the city and we used the BART system to take a very long train ride to the Golden Gate Bridge and then to Fisherman's Wharf, but it was well worth it. We can say that we saw the iconic monuments of San Francisco City. This was a surreal moment for me as well because it's been several years since I've been back in San Francisco and it was really cool to be able to visit it with a friend and to just have a photo with my sticker of the Golden Gate Bridge. My friend is actually from Canada and she had been to San Francisco before but this was both of our first times in our adulthood. We made our way to Fisherman's Wharf where the sun was setting and we had of course food in for dinner with clam chowder bread bowls and I gotta say we were both very disappointed we both remember eating at Budin's and having a bowl of clam chowder being so delicious but it just didn't hit the same we made the best out of the situation and at least we got some good ephemera for our travel journals we ended our evening by having a stroll on Pier 39 and it was very windy and chilly and a lot of the stores were closed. So we headed back to Millbrae where the hotel was. Day one was absolutely crazy. The early access was pushed back to 9 a.m. so that vendors could have more time to set up and not have to wake up so early but the San Francisco Pen Show Instagram was showing that they were live already by 7 a.m. So I can't imagine how early some of these vendors were here to set up. Once we got in at 9 a.m., we made our way straight to Bungo Box, where my friend was hoping to find the Esterbrook collaboration pen. And here she is. She actually did pick it up. It was the only one that they had. They said it was the last one of the designs, given that they had been selling them from other previous pen shows. And she picked it up in the extra fine nib. Luckily, she prefers extra fines and fines, and it was just in her nib size for her. They had some really fun Maki E converters that had books and coffee theme on them. My friend was able to pick up a Mount Fuji one to go with her Pilot 74 shareholder pen that she got from Japan. One of the tables near Bungo Box was Boku Mondo and they were crazy. They had a huge crowd around them already right at opening and by the end of day one I found out that they sold out all of their inventory for the whole weekend just on Friday. We made our way to the Leonardo table because they were giving away free tote bags, no purchase necessary. So of course we looked at their pens, but the main reason we were there was to pick up a tote bag. Some of them were very cool to see in person and see all the variations of their blanks. Here's an example of what the tote bags looked like. It was really helpful to use them to haul all of our purchases from the first day. 
We made our way to Aesthetic Bay, very close to Leonardo, and we were shocked at some of the discounts of these pens. What stopped us in our tracks were these rotted pilot vanishing points. And then we didn't really consider that the Namiki discount was going to apply to the pilot rotten, but the owners of Aesthetic Bay told us that they were 30% off the listed price. I personally prefer the Rodden Stripes version, but it was more expensive than the Galaxy version. The Galaxy was at $540 and the Stripes was at $705. If you add the 30% off, then the Galaxy comes out to $378 and the Stripes would have been just shy of $500. I was surprised to see a Sailor Pro Gear Old Fashioned. I had actually just purchased the Old Fashioned right before the pen show and I purchased it because I was able to bargain and get my offer accepted. I really didn't think I was going to be able to see a Sailor Old Fashioned but I was surprised to find it here from Aesthetic Bay but the price that I had purchased from a D stash was still cheaper than what they were offering the Sailor with a discount. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is Aesthetic Bay's first time attending and being a vendor for the San Francisco International Pen Show. They are from Singapore and they really came to be a showstopper because almost everything was 30% off, even their Pilot Customs 823. They were also selling Platinum 3776 Century Celluloids and the newest Shape of Hearts Chai Latte for 30% off. At the end, these prices were way below the competitors of others at the show and even what you can find online right now. My friends were very happy with their purchases and wasting no time, we were lucky to find Brandon from Atlas Stationaires aka Hollywood and if you saw him you were able to trade a piece of gum and he would give you the sidewalk gum ink exclusive from Atlas Stationers with Robert Oster. Would you guys like some stickers? Yes. You would love. I have a sticker for you too. You have a sticker for I me? I have a sticker for you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Let's talk about pens baby. Let's talk about stationery. I love it. I love it. I love the bridge design too. Thank you. After collecting our ink from Brandon, we made our way to Everyday Explorer Co. where we saw Christine and Abby hard at work. This was the first stationery booth that we visited and they had a small line to be able to shop their items. This was the first table that I purchased something and it really got me in the stationery mindset for the rest of the pen show. I spent more on stationery than I did actually buying a pen. Making our way to Traveler's Company, we walked by Van Ness Pens and they had this giant Caveco that they let us take a picture with and this Retro 51 nib. We fell in line for Plotter. The Traveler's Company line was very long, so we thought, let's prioritize Plotter. While waiting in line, we played around with the hardware corner customizations and really tried to pick which colors looked best. I have a rose gold spine on my Lishio plotter and we looked at rose gold and the gunmetal or the black option. I ultimately decided that if I had time to get this customized, I would choose the black. I was most interested in looking at the event limited edition scratch shoulder leather in the color orange in the plotter bible size so here is job opening it up for me so i can see the shade of orange and when i saw how fall pumpkin orange it was it's actually darker in person it is showing in camera i just had to pick it up and little did i know that this one was number six out of seven yes there was only seven of these made and i was able to swoop one up the last one actually went to the customer behind me and so i feel really lucky to have been where i was in that spot in line with one of my top priority vendors down and definitely one of my biggest purchases we started to walk around the rest of the floor and see what they had to offer and it was really fun to see this giant pilot vanishing point and take a picture with it our next step was london pen company my friend was looking for an abalone blank pen and so she stopped by multiple pen craftsmen and pen makers 
I personally admire and appreciate the craftsmanship of these resin pens, but I don't find that they fit anywhere in my collection. We made our way to the Oak Room to find some stationary vendors to shop at, and Pinky Elephant's line was crazy. Little Lou was doing these portraits, and the line was getting pretty long for people waiting to do them. We stopped by the back corner of the room to Inky Converters, and this was a stop I had on my list. I really wanted to buy a ink bottle pen, and I settled on the color pink. They even had some fun stamps for us to commemorate the event with. In the same room was Tokubetsu Memory, another stationery shop that I had on my wish list to stop by and visit. They had the cutest freebie stamp to use and I actually had my plotter gutted and used for the event to track my purchases and stamp away with any freebies. There was one specific pet tape that I know she carries that I can't find anywhere else and I was really hoping to be able to see it. From all of the stationary decoration vendors, Tokubatsu Memory is where I spent the most money. I was able to get the pet tape that I was looking for from Wohen Studio, but I also fell in love with a new illustrator, Rice is Beautiful, and I got their capybara and ducks designs. Going back to pens, one of the best things about a pen show is to be able to admire pens that I'll probably never own in my collection. They're just way too expensive or they just don't fit my needs for writing like this king of pens. It so beautiful but it is just way too big for me to hold and then of course this beautiful Maki-e Sakura pen it is four thousand dollars and was the only one at the pen show and it is just absolutely stunning and beautiful we were all holding it and taking pictures and being very very careful with it one of my priorities was to find a Pelican M400 white tortoise and to be able to test and write with it in person. I believe that the M400 would have been too small for my liking and while I didn't convince myself, the colorway definitely won me over. I did prefer holding an M600 and even more so an M800. I think the sweet spot for me might be an M600. I was really falling in love with this white tortoise the more that I used it and the more that I looked at it but ultimately if I could have my dream combination it would be an M600 white tortoise. Five years ago it discontinued it in our system but it was never discontinued by Pelican and I think I know what happened because this came out as a 600 also oh. as a special edition oh. but they in, put the floor right the floor, yeah. but it, they made it for one year in a six which was which was wow. supposed to be discontinued you know after one and year the four, and the six. but the but four, keep the four i think the four got discontinued with the whole you know the, oh they're like the, the, the whole thing whole <laughs> and then i and i just come along five years ago and oh it's discontinued people ask about it. no it's discontinued look it up it's discontinued so anyway, I brought them back in and we've been selling the heck out of them. At 12 o'clock, I had a nib grinding appointment with Kirk Spear from Pen Realm. And yes, you heard that correctly. At 12, early access started at 9. So everything you've seen thus far was just the first three hours of the show. But I had two of my pens worked on. The first one being my Wancher Matcha Latte with a medium nib. And I got a cursive smooth italic grind. My second pen was the Yoseka home pro gear pen and i got that tuned and smooth to be able to write a little less scratchy less feedbacky kirk is really such a funny guy it was such a treat to be able to talk with him and have him work on my nibs i learned about him through jats and because of him i don't know that i'll be able to go to any other nib meister Right after my appointment, I walked down the foyer to the Plotter Hardware Customization. I went with the black or chrome on my black Lishio, and then I got the gold hardware on my orange shoulder scratch leather. I'm saying that wrong. Orange scratch shoulder leather. 
Although early access opened at 9, some of the services were not available until later times. For example, the plotter hardware wasn't available until 12. The Sailor Build Your Own Pen was also not available until 12. So here we are now at the Sailor table putting together our pens and here is what I picked out. I was able to pick out a Tatcha Silk woven case as well and I opted for the green color. Eileen and I had signed up for a nib care and tuning workshop at 1.30 and here I am looking through my loop to see if I have my tines realigned properly. The most important takeaway from this workshop was to know how to realign the tines because a lot of the times a lot of the problems can be fixed by realignment. Then the next part was to learn how to smooth the nib to your preference in case it was scratchy or too much feedback. In this view, I actually have the loop against my camera lens and you can see all the detail here. And no time to rest, because rest is for the week. I'm just kidding, you should definitely rest when you can but Eileen and I did not. We just had so much adrenaline powering through us that we went back on the show floor and here I am looking through the Fog Cats vendor. They were I think one of the only local artists based in San Francisco and it was really cool to see all of their illustrations and I did pick up some stickers here. This next shop I had been trying to get to all day and I finally made it before the end of the show. This is Kubo and Lucy. I got to meet my friends for the first time. The owner is Yuxing and her friend Susie was helping her out and then this gachapon was really fun and I was able to get a scissors pin and definitely added it to my stationery bag right away. It was a very long eight hours for those who attended the show and even longer day for those who were vendors and we went to the Westin restaurant because we were all so tired and I cannot believe I was able to meet so many of my online friends in person them face to face and have real conversations in real time. Day one was so amazing and here we have Odin. He is one of the organizers dogs and he is actually the unofficial maybe official mascot for the SF Pen Show. Here is my collective haul from day one. Definitely an epic haul and already way over my budget. The two big ticket items were the sailor and the plotter. Hello, day two of the SF Pen Show. Man, were we all really tired today. I think the adrenaline really started to wear off, but there was still so much excitement, still so much I hadn't seen yet, and I finally made my way to the rickshaw table. I knew I wanted to pick up one of the new Abby C and Job collaboration pouches. Thank you to everyone who stopped me to say hi and get a sticker from me. I really appreciated it. And it really made me feel so welcome in this community and so appreciated by all of you. For day two, my friends and I did a lot more walking around, browsing, and just leisurely enjoying the show, seeing vendors that we hadn't seen yet, and stopping by tables where we know we might not have shopped at, but we really wanted to expose ourselves to different kinds of products and different kinds of pens and just see what all the other vendors were about. It was a little bit dangerous though because sometimes we were tempted by some of the items but it was nice to see what free stamps or stickers that they were offering. This notebook I happened to see by chance thanks to my friend and it really reminded me of my sister-in-law so I picked it up for her. She is one sister-in-law that's always been interested in my journaling and she's started to do it now too and I would love to give this to her as a gift. One vendor that I saw from Yoseka Stationery Fest was Pendulum and they make very cool and interesting wooden trays to hold pens, to hold ink samples, to hold other files and it was really nice to see their products and talk with them in person. Next, we walked by Luxury Brands America and they had a ton of Colorverse inks. We honestly just admired the packaging for some time. Yes, please. 
I know. It is the biggest flag. Yes. For day two, one of our top priorities was to go to Pinky Elephant and Little Lou since they were so jam-packed and busy on Friday. And today she was doing portraits every few hours and so we waited in line until the portraits opened at 10 and we were able to sign up and get a number to come back when the portraits were finished. I did some shopping and added some new Potter and Cats to my stationery bag. It was really nice getting to talk with RJ this was Pinky Elephant and Little Lou's first time ever being a vendor for a show. My friend Eileen had been looking for an abalone pen. Our friend Jats was able to help us bargain and she was able to lower the price on the pen that she was wanting and seal the deal. We spent the next hour looking at a bunch of pens that we can't afford. This was at the Tatcha booth and these pens were so beautiful, such interesting uses of material. Here we have some rotten, then there is some quail shells. The craftsmanship and detail of all of these Japanese pens is just absolutely stunning. One thing I was interested was to see wood pens at the pen show. They are so beautiful in photos and even more beautiful in person, but some of these are just way out of my price range as well. We stopped by the bungo box table just to see how they were doing and they were pretty much cleared out of everything that we had seen the day before and there were only a few pens and inks left. It was really fun to be able to flip through each other's travel journals and see the different ways that we style our pages. I would really love to see how much more stationary forward the SF pen show will be in the future. We had lunch at In-N-Out and we were so hungry I had no footage there, but when we got back to the pen show floor around 2, 2.30, we went to Nagasawa just to see what they had. It was one of the vendors that I really wanted to see, but it kept getting pushed back with all the other exciting things and appointments, and quite honestly, they were in the middle of the main ballroom floor, and it was hard to get to them a lot of the times. With, with our energy quickly dwindling, we took a seat and and took advantage of these swatch stations for the first time. It was something that we really wanted to do, but with all that was happening, we never found ourselves able to sit down and slow down. We went back to Luxury Brands of America for their raffle and spoiler, I did not win. <laughs> And with that, we left the pen show and here is my haul of day two. Good morning, day three, the final day of the pen show. I actually didn't think I was going to be able to stop by because I thought I was gonna have to leave at the time early access opened, but I was able to squeeze in one hour given that the airport was so close, literally 10 minutes away from the event. I took advantage of swatching the inks. Today's mission was actually to help Eileen get to Kirk Spear so that he could tweak a nib grind that he had done. Then I spent some time ink swatching while waiting. And final thing that I really wanted to do was get my TN stamped because they had the giant big TN and this part was so scary, so nerve wracking, but I really wanted to commemorate the end of my first SF pen show by stamping my favorite California TN standard insert and I'm glad it ended up coming out well because I was ready to have a little tear roll down my face and have some regrets but I knew that it was going to be worth it even if it came out a little bit messed up but to my surprise it came out perfectly and exactly how I wanted to. The stamp was a little bit dry and so I actually held it for a full 
minute and 15 seconds and I think that really helped though the ink is really dry and superficial and so it is already starting to rub off from the elastic pressure and sliding around but I'm really happy with how it came out I'm so excited to close this SF pen show with this commemorative TRC stamping and here I am sadly leaving just thinking about how amazing this time was so many memories made getting to meet a ton of friends online in person for the first time hobby can bring people together and I am so so ready to do this all over again next year if I can successfully have a no spend the rest of the year and honestly budget because I was not I was prepared for this year I'm just flabbergasted by how much I actually spent although I don't know why I'm surprised because it's me <laughs> I like to buy things thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one